What's up, techies? It's your boy, Tech Panda, and it's Tech Tuesday. And on today's episode, we have the Sony A7 III. This camera has been one of the most controversial cameras of the last couple of years. It has a lot of Canon and Nikon users collectively jumping ship. And for good reason, the Sony a7 III is a home run. And Sony has made a lot of money with this camera. I have been a Canon user for over 15 years up until this point. I started with the little Canon power shot, little point and shoot camera that took four AA batteries, a 512 megabyte compact flash card, and I earned my chops with photography with the Canon brand and platform. I graduated to the first ever digital Canon Rebel DSLR camera. Then I graduated to the 40D, the 50D, the 80D, and then finally the 7D Mark II. Those cameras were great in their heyday, but now Canon has kind of turned their back on the hybrid shooter. They've kind of geared their equipment towards the photographer and not the hybrid shooter. The five, I remember the uh, 5D Mark II was one of the most influential cameras of this generation. I remember they filmed uh, a house, uh, the house uh, series, TV series was filmed uh, on a 5D Mark II at the time. And everybody was like, yeah, woo, you know, yeah. like Canon was a pioneer and I don't know why they continue not to be that same company they were. They claim they'd cannibalize their Canon platform uh, with their cinema grade cameras, but those cameras are meant for a totally different thing. That being said, I've jumped the Canon ship to switch to the Sony brand. And the reason why this camera is jam-packed full of features, and let's go ahead and dive into the features and the pros of this body. It has two card slots. So if you lose a memory card towards, uh, due to damage or something, you guys will have a backup. That is a great professional feature, especially if you're doing weddings. It has upgraded battery life from the previous Sony Alpha series camera. They have literally got the perfect amount of, of juice. I, I think I've shot for six hours straight and never had to change the battery. That's pretty impressive. And it doesn't overheat. It has 4K. It has 120 frames per second at full 10, 1080p. Uh, you have S-Log. Uh, you have a headphone jack, you have a joystick, pretty standard features, and it is a great full-frame camera that's lightweight. You get that depth of field with the full-frame uh, full lens, the, the full-frame sensor. You get that depth of field, the low-light performance, and Sony has delivered on the lenses. Finally, they have amazing lenses. Yes, they're expensive. I know that they're expensive, and photography in general, and this videography uh, industry is tends not to be inexpensive. So you will need some cash. It's a $2,000 body just for the camera. For the money, uh, a comparable uh, camera to this is a Canon 1DX Mark II, and that's almost $6,000. This camera is half the price, a little cheaper than half the price and it offers the same amount of features. That being said, the Sony a7 III is not a perfect camera. Uh, I personally do vlogs, and I vlog with this camera, and I love to see in the future iterations of this camera a fully articulating screen, so I can see what I look like, so then I can make sure I'm in focus and check in on what the frame looks like. That would be a huge benefit, and I don't know why they don't add that. Also, I would like to see a shutter cover, like a shutter cover. So when you are changing lenses in the field, I'm in a dusty, a very uh, harsh environment on a camera. I'd like to see a protective uh, 
element that goes in front of your sensor. Your, your sensor is pretty much exposed. And I would like to see a cover so when you're changing lenses, you don't have to deal with that pesky lens dust. Oh, I hate the lens dust because you never know when it's coming. And with a mirrorless camera, that's something you're gonna have to deal with. Personally, I have a little uh, lens gummy. I forget the name of the brand. Uh, I'll leave it in the description below. Um, but it's like a gummy bear with a toothbrush. Um, I'll get a clip of it as well. And I lightly, ever so lightly, very carefully, uh, just basically stick that gummy on the very tip of the sensor and it'll pick up the dust fairly well. And I've been able to combat the lens dust issue, but I think you could eliminate that if you had some kind of protective uh, film that went up across that every time you turn the camera off. Um, another thing, the grip. Guys, the grip, it is what it is. They've tried to save weight and make it a lightweight camera, but when you have a 70 to 200 or even a $12,000 500 millimeter, a small body, it's, it doesn't matter. I would like to have a full grip um, and not have my pinky uh, dangling off the grip. Um, other than that, guys, it's a solid piece of kit. If you are looking for a workhorse, the Sony a7 III is hands down the best camera for the money. If you can name another camera that's better than it, I'm all ears. Um, I would love to come back to the Canon brand and platform. I love their color science and I absolutely think they have gone somewhere in the last couple of years with the five, uh, the EOS R, the full frame mirrorless, but it's still not up to the Sony a7 III spec. Um, it's just, it, it's not there yet. And neither was the Sony a7 III and the Alpha series camera before it. They had battery issues, overheating issues. Um, they had the rolling shutter issues that you have with the mirrorless camera. So, I get that it'll take time for Canon and Nikon to kind of fully come on board and be able to combat the Sony features. But I know a lot of friends that are in the industry. I know a lot of people that are looking at this camera and this camera is hands down, it's controversial. People are wondering, do I jump ship? And I say, if you're thinking about it, do it. Because Canon and Nikon are years away from having a camera comparable to the Sony a7 III. That being said, guys, it is always up to you. You don't have to take my opinion for you know, nothing. You can do whatever you want, but you have a stupid amount of like features on this camera. It's ridiculous. Also, to recap a little bit, this camera would be great for a first time user if you can swing the cost. You can grow into this camera. You have the full frame low light capability. You have that depth of field that that full frame mirrorless sensor will get for you. It's that full frame sensor look and it's amazing with prime lenses. Um, the professional wedding photographer, the professional wedding videographer, videographers in general, you can benefit from this camera and its price point is perfect to get your feet wet with full frame capability. And if you're thinking about the mirrorless platform and uh, operating system, I highly recommend the Sony a7 III, hands down the best choice I've made. And I, like I said, I was a Canon user for 15 years and I swore by them for a long time, but it was time to jump ship and I needed the best tool, and the best tool happened to be the Sony a7 III. All right, guys, that wraps up our episode for today. If you like what we're doing here at the channel, please hit that like and subscribe button. Also, hit that bell notification. It would help me out tremendously. If you don't like what we're doing, please leave it in the comments below. I would love to best serve you, my viewer. I want to make content that you guys want to hear and see. And remember, until the next episode, guys, please stay safe, have fun, and we'll see you next time. Woo! Hang loose, brother!